there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part three and the finale of our adjustable stool build. Well guys, we're in the home stretch now and we've made some really great progress along the way. So let's not waste any more time talking. Let's get straight to the woodworking. Well, the next thing that we want to do is give all of these legs a good sanding. And as well, I'd like to take a 1 8 inch round over to all of our curved edges. I want to leave the shoulders uh, up here at the top of the legs intact with their sharp, crisp edges. And I also want to leave the bottom of the foot intact with sharp, crisp, crisp edges. But these curves, I want to soften them a bit with a 1 8 round over. Well, the up and down adjustment of this stool is accomplished by a threaded dowel and our support pieces that hold our leg together, they will also be tapped with the thread that will match the dowel. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to start by drilling our holes and tapping our threads into our support pieces, both top and bottom. Well, for the post of our seat, we will be using an inch and a half diameter dowel. So in order to tap the threads, you're going to need two things. You're going to need a hole that is one eighth of an inch shy of your dowel dimension. In this case, inch and a half dowel minus one eighth. We're going to need a one and three eighths of an inch diameter hole. And you're also going to need the tap. So what we're going to do, we already have our holes punched that we used initially, uh, or the hole drilled rather, dead center here that we used on our circle cutting jig in order to spin these and cut them round. This is still the dead center of our piece, as is the same with our walnut half lap support piece here. So I'm going to take it over to the drill press and I'm going to drill a one and three eighths diameter through hole in each one of these pieces. With the Beal threading taps, it's nice that they have this shoulder here that fits perfectly in our hole. And what that does is help us to align everything square to our stock. And now just using our shop made tap handle, we're just gonna very carefully rotate in our tap Every once in a while, you want to give it a quarter turn backwards just to clear the threads and give it a chance to cut in. And we're just going to carry on till we get both our walnut and our maple pieces threaded. Well, as you can see, the tap does a fantastic job of getting nice, clean threads cut to the inside. And that is basically all of the pieces that we need except for the inch and a half maple dowel that we're going to require in order to have the stool adjustable up and down. And we made that dowel using our lathe duplicator not too long on the show. And I did tell you it was for a certain project and this would be the project that we're going to use it for. It's now time to set up the Beal threading jig. And what we're going to do is thread some threads that match the ones that we just tapped and basically we're going to leave a two inch shoulder on that piece of dowel. It's going to be 19 inches long and we're going to leave a two inch shoulder in order to glue it into the seat and the seat ring. But other than that, tap your threads. If you're interested or you're not sure how to do that using the jig, I did put a tutorial on it and I will place a link below so that you can check that out if you're interested. But <laughs> There's not much more to say about it other than to put some threads onto that dowel. Well, once all the threading is done, you should have something that looks like this. And I've put a little bit of wax in there just to help it spin. The top one is much tighter because it's double threaded. And you can see here, it's hard for me to turn. Mind you though, I can't get any leverage trying to hold it like this but it sure doesn't turn as nicely as this single thickness here. I'm not concerned. Once we have the seat glued on top here, this whole assembly will turn quite easily. Now you don't need to thread the bottom one if you don't want to, but if you do want to, like what I've done here, what you're going to have to do is do dry fits 
and assemble it to make sure that you have this whole thing lined up and it has to be assembled with the threaded dowel in place. You can't just put it together and then thread the dowel because you're taking a chance that the threads are not going to line up and then you've got a problem. Well, we've got this and now it's time to do exactly what I just talked about and put the whole assembly together. So this next step may be helpful to you to have a second set of hands. And all we're going to do is we're going to check around the assembly. We're going to place our legs in place into the top bracket here, right into that slot that we made for it. And we're going to make sure that it's where it needs to be and that it's tight against our lower bracket. If both shoulders on the top and the bottom both are flush with the bracket or the, sorry, the slot that you've cut for them, then you're good to go. They will not be tight in this one. Don't think they will. It's not going to happen. But they will be in this top assembly. So if they're not tight, if something is not quite right, if there's a gap at the bottom, then this assembly has to be further away. If the gap is at the top and the bottom is tight, that means that this assembly is actually too far away and it needs to be brought closer to this smaller assembly. So play around with it and get your height and once you get that set you can move on to the next step. Now truth be told we're only actually going to glue the top of the legs into our assembly and we'll just apply a little bit of glue to the top piece of our walnut here and this inside shoulder Make sure that you've got all your preparation for the glue up ready. Things like water, Q-tips, that sort of thing. Rags ready to wipe out or wipe off any of the squeeze out that's going to happen when this gets assembled. So one by one, carefully insert your legs in place, making sure that they're completely seated and flush in your assembly. And with that one in place now, we'll just clean up the squeeze out and move on to the next one. Well, it's now time to fasten our lower assembly here. And all we're going to do is we're going to measure in from this corner right here. We're going to measure in a half an inch and we're going to place a line right there at a half an inch. And I'm going to use a doweling jig for this. You don't have to, you can freehand it, but I have the jig, so why not utilize it? And all I'm going to do is line it up with that half, that mark at the half inch point that I just put on there. And I'm going to tighten it down eventually. There we go. And we're going to drill a quarter inch hole in through and we're going to stop it at about halfway through this leg. And once we get that done, we're going to use a quarter inch dowel to pin the leg onto our assembly. Then we'll clean up the squeeze out, cut the dowel flush, and then carry that process on all the way around for all four legs. As well, we're also going to do it for the top assembly, the smaller piece that we made. We're going to pin all of those as well, just to give it a bit of extra strength. And now we have the base of our stool pretty much done. It still needs a good sanding, a hand sanding all over to, you know, smooth everything out and get it ready for the finish. Now you may be wondering, or some of you may be wondering, why didn't I just drill straight through and do a solid pin, a solid quarter inch dowel right through to brace those cross pieces? And I'll tell you why. 
All it takes is to be out just a little bit when drilling, and we're using a handheld drill here, so there's plenty of room for error when, you know, the user isn't exactly perfect. So that small little bit of deviation from perfection and squareness, when it comes out the other side, I'm telling you, it went from being off that much to being off that much, and it looks terrible. So. I would much rather take the extra steps and drill in from each side and do a half pin to meet in the middle. That way, aesthetically, looking at it as a woodworking piece, all of the dowel pins are exactly centered and exactly in the same location. So now that that is done, we can turn this, uh, put this piece aside for just a little bit giving those pins that extra little time to set up. And we're gonna turn our attention to the seat. And what we need to do is mount that ring that we made onto the bottom of it. Well, I have a scrap of the threaded dowel that I was using to do the setup. And I'm gonna use that in order to align this ring. And all I'm gonna do is apply some wood glue to the bottom of it. And you don't need a lot, it's not a thick layer because we're actually gonna pin this uh, with some dowels. So I'm just gonna apply a thin layer of glue here, set it in place using that uh, dowel as a, an alignment pin, so to speak. And once it's dried and set up, we're gonna take it over to the drill press. So I've placed some marks on here that I want to drill and they're basically one inch out from the center. I'm going to drill a 3 8 diameter hole straight down through this ring and halfway into the seat base and I'm going to glue in a 3 8 inch diameter dowel. Flush cut it and then sand it flat. Basically, I'm pinning this ring just as I pin the rest of the joints. I don't want the glue to let go on this as you're rotating the stool and make it so that the ring snaps off or the seat snaps off. Just a little extra strength. That's all we're looking for here. And then the final step in the assembly is that we are going to apply glue to our post and a little bit on the inside of our seat and we will glue our seat in place onto our post. And as always, don't forget to clean up your squeeze out. And there you have it. An adjustable maple walnut stool. Guys, this project has been a load of fun and a ton of different great woodworking processes here for you to try. Or if you've already tried them, then a few of them for you to master. Everything here from template making and routing with the templates right down to duplication jigs for the lathe to make a dowel. And then of course we have the Beal wood threader to make the adjustable part. We've got half lap joints, we've got dowel pins, we've got a circle cutting jig. We have got pretty much everything here and it was a ton of fun. Guys, an absolute great way to spend a weekend out in the shop working on this and I might put a couple rubber feet on this thing just to keep it off of the shop floor because that's what it was made for. It was made to use out here in the shop. But I mean, this thing's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Almost makes me wish I had a piano. <laughs> Maybe I should build one. That ain't happening. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. This build has been a blast and I hope that you've enjoyed it too. More importantly than enjoying just watching this program, I honestly hope that you're going to take the steps that I've shown you here and transfer that to your shop and what you can do out there and make your own stool. 
maybe mix it up. Maybe you don't want to make it adjustable because you don't have the threader and that's okay. At least what you have is the whole concept. If you like this design, then you can make it with just a post. That's not that big of a deal. If you are going to turn your own maple dowel for this, my suggestion is if you're going to be using the Beal Threader, buy some cheap inch and a half poplar dowel at your local big box store and use that for the setup of the jig so you're not wasting your maple dowel. Um, just a little tip there to save you a few bucks and although you may have to purchase that dowel, you won't be wasting your good maple one. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I don't know what else to say other than I hope you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.